QuickBooks Online. Profit and loss reports export to Excel. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive. Selecting the option that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're going to be using the United States version of the software and verify that we're not a robot. Zooming in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel currently at 125% on the zoom in noting in the cog drop down that we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view and we'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views so you can get a look at where things are located in each of them. Right click on the tab up top as we do every time so we can duplicate it and put reports into the duplicated tab. Right click on the duplicated tab to duplicate again. Yes, a double duplicate. Back to the tab to the middle. Reports on the left. Opening up the standard balance sheet. We do every time as that's thinking, even though it's done thinking. We're going to go to the tab to the right. Open up the reports again. This time the PL profit loss income statement and scroll up. Close up the hamburger, otherwise known as the ham boogie, and change the range from 010122 tab 123122 tab. Run it to refresh it. Back to the middle tab. Close the boogie and scroll up in those ranges. They are a changing from 010122 tab 123122 tab. Run it and then back to the tab to the right. That's the setup process we do every time. We've been talking about the variance on the income statement and how we can provide those variants in a package to our clients possibly at the end of the month or the end of the year. So last time we talked about saving our reports, customizing them, saving them so that we can get to each of them as easily as possible and efficiently create the bundle that we would like to put together possibly at the end of the month, quarter, year. Once we have that set up, we can email them to a client one by one, but that's not very professional. Typically, if you have a lot of reports, which we may have, if we now have a combination of balance sheet income statement and other reports together, we can print them if that's still, if you still actually, you know, handle paper these days, but oftentimes we're emailing at this point and then you could, you could save as a PDF and then possibly give it to somebody in a, a link of a zipped file, which could look something like this. So we have a zipped file, which might look a little different depending on how your zipping goes, but we have a zip file, which we can attach, or we might put it on a cloud drive and possibly number the files so that they have some idea of when they should open them or what order they might want to open them in. And then we also saw in the prior presentation that in the reports area on the left hand side, they have this nice management reports, which gives you a, a, a nice way to organize your reports into an, a management overview report. So that's another way that you can provide them. This time we're going to be exporting to Excel and then using a PDF printer to combine the reports into one PDF file. The benefit of that method is that you can, you can basically uh, get your reports into one PDF file, which you can also do with this management report. But if you use Excel, you can also do further formatting, which might be necessary, or you might want to do such as just fonts or, and that kind of stuff, or possibly changing the names to, to whatever names of, of rows and whatnot that you think are more preferable. Uh, and so we can do that in Excel too, and add more formatting, you know, that we would, might want to do in Excel in individual reports. And then the most complex method and the most detailed gives you the most flexibility would be combining 
Excel and possibly Word, for example, integrating them so that you can then uh, generate a, a report that has a lot of customizability uh, within it. So we won't be doing that. We'll just show you the components of exporting it to Excel. Okay, so we're going to go back into these profit and loss. I'm going to recreate three variants of the profit and loss report as we've done in prior presentations. We're going to save them to the customization or memorize those reports. And then imagine that each month we would go into those memorized reports and group them in such a way that we can provide them to the end user. We're going to be using the method this time of exporting them uh, to Excel using Excel and a PDF printer in order to put them all on one PDF file. Also pointing out that we can make changes once they've been exported to Excel. So the first one we've been looking at, let's do these fairly quickly, is going to be that we collapse. Let's go ahead and just collapse the items on the profit and loss. And I'm gonna call this a profit and loss summary or a summary income statement. So I'm just gonna change the name here. I'm gonna call it a summary income statement. And that'll be our first one do our standard change up top. So I'm going to customize. I'm going to get rid of the pennies, brackets, and red numbers. And then on the header and filter, I changed the name. I'm just going to get rid of the date, time, report, basis, and run it. So there it is. Let's save that to the customization. And I'm just going to put a number one in front of it. I'm going to add a new group, which is going to be called month and reports and add that and this name already is there okay if it's already there i'm gonna then customize it hold on a sec let's go back in here save it and then i'm gonna put it in that group so there they are and save it so then if i go back to the first tab and refresh this then i should have that group there and that one report within it so customized reports month end reports has that one in it it didn't save the number so i'm going to edit it again and just add the number let's just make two more variants for our example purposes so i'm going to save it and close it back to the income statement let's do a comparison by quarter and i'll just hit the drop down and say i want to compare this by quarter run it change the name of the report so this is going to be i'll call it a comparative income statement we'll say comparative income statement and we're going to say say by quarter something like that i'm going to copy the name so i can save it we might want to also remove this other date might not be necessary now so if i customize it i can go down to the header and footer get rid of that report period and so there is that and then let's go ahead and save customization i'm going to rename it call this number two income statement by quarter save it and then we'll do one other variant which will be like comparing december to november let's say hit the drop down back to the totals only back to the starting point and then i'm going to say this is for the month of december 120122 to 123122 and then say I want to compare that to the prior period change in dollar and percent change and run it there it is then I'm just going to change the name comparative income statement oh, not zeros where did that come from comparative income statement statement by month you know let's say current month and prior month something like that i'm going to copy the title I'm just going to copy that and then in the save customization i'll just put that right here so we'll say this is number three and there we have it so just to have a couple of reports and then at the end of the each month the method would be we're going to go back to the first tab i'm going to run these so no matter what method we have It'd be nice to have them in kind of a customized area here. So now they're customized. And once here, we could then use them to generate our management reports like we talked about last time. We can export them to Excel. We can group them in Excel as we did in a prior presentation, looking something like this so that we can zip the files and provide them to someone. 
or we can have them in our reports tab here and possibly give them to somebody uh, in terms of a cloud drive, in the format of a cloud drive. So th these are the balance sheet reports we did last time. So we started over with the income statement reports, but maybe I should have named the income statement report like number five, six, and seven. So maybe I'll change that. But this is the other way, or we can create an Excel worksheet that is then used to construct a PDF file from the Excel worksheet, or possibly integrate Excel with Word to create a more formal, you know, a financial statement report type of document. So let's go back on over. I'm going to rename these to what was I on four? I was on five. Let's name them five, six, and seven. So I'm going to edit this one and let's name it number five and then save and close. And let's edit this one to number six save and close and then this one to oh, I opened it I don't want to open it I want to edit it to number seven okay so that'll be after my balance sheet reports okay five six and seven so now I'm just going to open them up I'm going to export them to Excel and add them to my Excel worksheet where I already had my balance sheet reports which looks like this if you don't have this Excel worksheet, that's okay. You could just start a new worksheet, but we had these on there from when we were looking at the balance sheet stuff. I'm just gonna add the income statement stuff and then use Excel to print them on one uh, PDF file. So I'm gonna open up the summary income statement. We'll just simply export it. You do need Excel in order to export. I'm in Google Chrome, therefore it opens up down below. It'll open up however they open in whatever browser you're using, like Firefox or or um, Explorer or something. I'm gonna hold control, zoom in. I usually check to, to see if it fits on one page by going to, actually, hold on a sec. I'm gonna copy it over and then I'll start formatting it. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the triangle, right click and copy it, and then go on over to my other sheet. And then I'm gonna add a new sheet with the plus button, make sure I'm in A1 or select the entire worksheet, right click and paste it. Then I hold in control, scroll in. I might change the name of the sheet, double clicking on the sheet name, summary income statement, something like that. And then you could do added formatting once you're in here. So first I would see, does it fit on one page? I usually go to the layout view and then back on over to the normal view gives us this little dotted line to see if it fits on a page. It clearly does because it's a nice skinny income statement. If I want it to be centered on the page, maybe I make this a little bit wider here and maybe I make this one a little bit skinnier, right? And so, so I make this skinnier so I don't have that wide column. And then you, if you wanted to, you can also add some space on the left by making you know, a space on the left if you so choose. So you can kind of mess with the formatting uh, if you would like to. That's the added benefit of putting it in Excel. You can, you can say have a title color. You can add things like a font that you can't really do within the QuickBooks Online. So you could change the font, si uh, font size or type which can give you a little bit of that, your own touch. You can add the borders, which is a pretty quick thing to do as well. So whatever formatting touches you would like to do, you could do a little bit more customization, although you wanna be careful because too much customization will make it so you gotta, you gotta recustomize everything every time you do it uh, this way in Excel. So then if I go to the first tab, when I print this, I'm going to be using the Cute PDF Printer, which is a free tool. I'm not advertising for them, but that's what I use. I think it's free. You could search for it in your browser to find it. And then I'm going to be printing the entire workbook instead of just one worksheet. And then notice the formatting is not all the same because I've just been giving some ideas. You would want it to be consistent, clearly. But you can see how we can print everything out to one PDF using this method. You can also put in a title page in Excel if you wanted to, although you'd have to format it using Excel formatting. It's doable, might not be as easy as if you had a Word document, for example, or you could try to integrate Excel and Word if you wanted to do that method. 
Closing this back out, we're then going to do it again. Let's do it two more times to put the added other two reports. I'm going to go back and open up report number six. And if it was the end of the month, I could just open it up. I can export it to Excel, open it up in Excel, and then allow the editing. And so enable editing, select the entire worksheet, right click and copy. And then I'm gonna go back to where I wanna put it, add another sheet, put it in A1, right click, paste, and then hold down control, scrolling up a bit. I'm gonna change the name, double clicking on the name, comparative income statement quarter, something like that. I'll see if it fits on a page, go into the layout view and back over. Looks like it does, perfect, just barely. I can add the touches that I want possibly a header being black and white, possibly changing the font, possibly making these black and white or some other header format. And we could change, you know, the color of the name maybe, or the font of the business title and that kind of stuff. I can add my brackets. That's, these are things that can be done fairly easily and without too much added effort. And there's that one. Let's save it. Let's do the last one, going back on over, back, and then I'll do number seven, open it up, drop down, export to Excel, open up the Excel document, and it's taking a little time. I'll enable the editing. I'm gonna put my cursor on the triangle, copy the whole thing, go back on over to the original, add another, put my cursor in A1, right click, paste and then change the name double clicking on the tab i'll say comparative income statement month or something holding down control scrolling up i'm going to see if it fits on one page by going to the layout view back over it doesn't because there's a dotted line so it's a little off i don't need this total column or row so i'm going to remove that putting my cursor on the four right click delete that and then I think I can just squeeze these together a bit and it should work. So I'm gonna go from B to E and combine them together. And it looks like the title is the thing that's getting a little bit tight here. I'm gonna to try to make it wide enough so it fits on one page uh, nicely without another space over here. And then you could do something to the title you can make it black and white. You can make this black and white maybe. You can add the borders if you want to do that add in the borders you can also you know get fancy with the underlines so maybe the net income you would like underlined using like this little double underline thing so you can add the underlines that way instead of having the format of the cell with an underline and you could go through and add those you know change those if you want so for example like right here see how this this underline is a is a uh, a format of the cell, a bottom border. You could go through here and say, okay, I'm gonna change these underlines to being, in essence, an underline this way, an underline this way, an underline this way, an underline like this, wherever those underlines are to this format. And then an underline like this, like this, like this, and then this one, bottom line, double underline. And then when you add the the borders, those underlines should still stand out. So I'm gonna then go into here and say, now I'm gonna put all borders. So now you get the borders on it and you still have those, those underlines, you know, in effect. So that's another method that you could, you could uh, try out. So, Oftentimes you might often, you know, make these smaller so that, so that you don't, you don't have that added long space there. And then I'm, I was making the other one bigger. I can make these smaller and then make this large enough so that it fits on a page. So that might be another, you know, kind of method that you can use. You can also add a space to the left and, you know, again, you can do whatever formatting you would think appropriate, but you want to be able to customize the formatting. All right. 
So let's go ahead and print it out now. I'm going to go to the file. Let's say we're going to print it. And so here's what it looks like. It's all a mess of different stuff because I've just been given some ideas, but there it is. And then I can save it to the PDF printer. So I'm going to save it to the PDF printer, which will make it into a PDF document, replacing the prior document. And so now when I provide this to somebody, instead of giving them, you know, a report by report, I can give them this document, right? So th so now this has the PDF file. Again, the formatting, you can, you can change it. You can standardize the formatting. But once in Excel, you've got a lot of options to do that. You can then also add your title page within Excel if you want to, or you can try to integrate Excel with Word. That gives you the most flexibility for like a, a nice professional, you know, batch of reports that's highly customizable in terms of fonts and, and style and all that kind of stuff. Although it's more time consuming typically. So those are the options. I'm going to go back on over to uh, QuickBooks and then just change to the business view. The only place uh, I've been in the business view. Well, if I'm in the business view, we've just been over here in the business overview. That's where the reports are. The reports under the accountant view are just on the left-hand side.